We're continuing our tutorial with Fast API Beginner as well as HTMX and Server Sent Events. I'm creating a new file in a Python virtual environment. Using pip, I've already installed Fast API. With Fast API installed with pip, I'm going to import it. There's a number of other Python packages that's required. So the syntax here is from FastAPI, import FastAPI, and then we're going to instantiate the FastAPI object. App equals FastAPI. We'll use the variable app as a way to interact with FastAPI. We're going to use the decorator from FastAPI to set up the route. The default route is that slash. And we're going to output HTML. So this tutorial series actually has FastAPI serving up the HTML. It's not using FastAPI as a API endpoint. The purpose is to focus on something called HTMX, which we'll get into shortly. So with the decorator oh, set, we can, that's going to the route, we have to set the output of the class response class, which will be HTML response. If you don't do this, the output will be JSON. We're going to set up an asynchronous module or asynchronous method. So it's just a keyword async in for, instead of the in front of the standard Python def, and we'll call ours home for this tutorial. From Fast API, we're also going to use the Fast API request. So the variable name is request with a lowercase. There's a colon, and then there's the type using the optional Python type hints. So it's colon request, which is the type of the data. In the root of the project, I'm going to create a folder called templates. Within the templates, we're going to put HTML files. So this is very similar to Django, if you're familiar with Django. So we'll create a variable called templates. By convention, it's the same name as the name of the directory that we're storing the HTML files in. And we're going to use Jinja2 templates, specify the directory, and the directory name is templates in our example. I believe you need to specify the directory. I don't think there's a default for templates. So I'm getting some linter errors here, but I think this is because I have my, um, the pylance linter, it's set to strict for the type definitions. So let's just, it's a little irritating right now, but let's just ignore the linter errors that's in red for the, the type definition. I thought maybe I didn't have Jinja installed but it's actually installed when you install the fast API with the standard module. So in, in square brackets, I left this part of the video in here in case that you just installed, if you did pip install fast API without square bracket standard, you might not have it. But I do have Jinja2 installed, so I can use the templates response. And the syntax is, so in the, the first string is the name of the file that you want to route to, and there's a comma, and the second one is the request. So it's quite similar to the Django syntax. So let's just create a file that we can use FastAPI to route to. It's an HTML file. I'll just call it G 
jinjastreaming.html. We just set up a really bare bones template in a VS Code or cursor. If you just type exclamation point, it's usually in there by default. And now you can set up the title and in the body of the HTML, we'll maybe set up something simple like a hello world or Jinja streaming. Now with our bare bones file existing in the templates folder of the root of the project, we can now specify the name of the file. And we're still getting the linter error, but I'm going to turn off the strict uh, linter check on this. I, I'm not sure why it's not finding the, the data type. Okay, let's give it a go here. So the syntax is uvcorn, and you have the name of the file without the .py. There's a colon app, which is what you instantiate FastAPI as, and now you have uvcorn running. uvcorn was installed with the standard uh, FastAPI module. And it works, you now have a HTML file that you can use to put content in and have that be connected to FastAPI. So it's looking more and more similar to a Django project uh, without the database and authentication and all the other things that comes with Django. We'll just add another string in here or a piece of text to see that it works and it's working. So let's go ahead and do this. The purpose of the tutorial is to show a stream displayed to the HTML page. So to display the stream, we're going to create another route to get the stream. So there's going to be two routes. One is the route to the HTML page. Another is a data route uh, slash progress, which you can access directly, but it's going to be data. And then we're going to connect that to the HTML page. The syntax of the stream route is almost identical to the route for the HTML page, right? So you have the decorator from FastAPI, you have async def, the name of the method, request, request. Uh, that little arrow there is just to specify that the return value is event source response, that data type, and that's optional. Then we're gonna run the async def event stream uh, we're setting it up here that will yield the stream yield is a keyword and everything after that is put into the stream so there's different ways to set up the the data format for server sent event we could put the raw server sent event format in here but i'm going to use a package called sse starlet which makes the formatting a bit easier and it's commonly used. And I don't think I have it installed actually. So let's go pip install SSE starlet. And it wasn't installed, so now it's installed. And we're gonna use the event source response eventually that it will, it will return the event source response, but we're just setting up the method that is handling the stream portion. So the keyword is yield. And then there's these two curly brackets. Uh, there's a specific wording that we're using event and data are it's like keywords for the SSE pro, uh, protocol. So we just do event message it's a string data then we have another string there for starting the connection so at this point we can piece out the rest of the stream but for a test i'm going to put the uh, event source response and try to get this first piece out and 
and this is actually not going to work but it's it's uh, the failure is not because of the python code actually there's a problem with the the cdn that i'll be using for the uh, htmx and uh, htmx sse so i'm leaving this portion in here for some reason when i copied it from the cdn it's not uh, this validation uh, string is not actually accurate you could probably get it from a different cdn but the integrity key was actually it's throwing me an error i'm going to leave the video like this so it might help you with debugging a similar future feature in the future so in, in addition to htmx we're going to use a separate package called uh, htmx hyphen extension hyphen sse and note the version this more popular is the older version of htmx and the package for SSE is also a different name. It's just SSE.js. So I'm using version two of HTMX. And I'm also going to use this Tailwind plugin, which was covered in the previous video. This is using the Tailwind with this syntax, Tailwind 3 and not Tailwind 4, which is how I can use the typography plugin with the pros class. So on line 11, the pros class is from typography and I'm putting a padding of four around the entire page just to make it look a bit more aesthetic. So we're setting up a div right here and this is where we're going to use the HTMX and HTMX SSE. This is the real guts of the tutorial here and it's an introduction to the syntax for HTMX. So you can refer to the HTMX documentation. We're going to first up the extension. So that SSE extension is needed to activate the server sent event. Uh, extension that's that's in the script that we just put in and there's a SSE connect so we're using server sent event so it's going to connect to the Python module or method that we created for progress it's it's the name of the function in Python right and we set up the route then we're going to swap it with uh, the message that comes in so if you look at the Python code, uh, there's something called a message and it'll do it. So it's not, I tested, it's not working. Uh, the AI incorrectly told me that I needed to extend the stream, which I don't think is necessary. So if, it, if you just go to slash progress, it, we're getting the data back, but the, the web page itself is not updating. So I'm not seeing the output from Python on the web page. So according to the AI, it says, oh, I, it, the stream is too short. Okay, so I'm going to extend the stream a bit. And I'm also going to put a uh, asynchronous wait. So async IO is a different package the handles async IO in Python is super common. And we can use this to put a sleep or a wait. And we'll set it to just wait for one second. I think the AI also thought it might be a race condition, but it's actually not the source of the problem. We're going to set up a, a range 1 to 10 to set up a, some type of log that's going out to the web page. We use the same syntax for yield. This syntax is specific to SSE Starlet. It's not the actual SSE protocol. 
it's a different format. So if you're coming from JavaScript, this may not be the exact same uh, format of the of the syntax to send to the web page. And we're using our F string. So the I in the curly brackets is the variable that's coming from the for loop. And we'll sleep it to kind of simulate a processing on the back end. Okay. So when I ran it, it still wasn't showing even with the longer stream here. So I realized at this point that the integrity key is it's giving me an error. And I'll probably change the CDN in the future, but since I'm in the middle of the tutorial, I'm just gonna do the quick hack and just delete it. Okay, we'll try it again. And now the SSE uh, extension to HTMX is giving me the error. So it's the same integrity key here. I'm gonna delete it. I should probably get a different uh, CDN endpoint, but since I'm already this far in the video, I'm just gonna delete the integrity check. Probably for a production, you probably wanna use a different CDN or just use HTML, just, just use it uh, within the local project. Okay, but now with that small change, it works. The page is not reloading, which is the real purpose of the tutorial. And I was just want to check whether AI was correct or not. And it still works without the longer stream. So I think the AI didn't identify the problem correctly. The event that you're seeing in the console is because the stream is looping at this point. In the future video, we'll show you how to close the stream to prevent that. So it's sending data over the server sent event. It keeps the connection open. And with that open connection, you can uh, send a bunch of data. And again, this, this error is because the stream is not closing and it's gonna loop. Congratulations, you now have a asynchronous streaming server with fast API. That's getting the, the data or uh, the HTML template using server sent events. In the next video, we're gonna connect the application to an AI using Olama as the LLM backend. Our eventual goal will be to stream the tokens from the LLM and have them appear on the screen.